All right, let's talk about LiDAR. Because you see, regardless of what the CEOs of any large autonomous vehicle manufacturer might be saying, LiDARs are one of the most valuable technologies in robotics right now. In fact, in my day job, a huge amount of my time is spent working with industrial LiDARs just like these ones, and I love them, I think they're great. So today, we're gonna to be looking at four different things. We're gonna look at what LiDARs are and how they're used in practice. We're gonna look at how they integrate with ROS. We're gonna look at how to simulate a LiDAR in Gazebo. And fourthly, we're gonna see how to integrate a hobby LiDAR into our own robotics project. So what is LiDAR? LiDAR stands for Light Detection and Ranging. And just like we've got sonar and radar for sound waves and radio waves, LiDAR uses light to measure the distance to an obstacle. This is really useful in robotics because if we can measure the distance to the things around us, we can sense and gain an understanding of the world that the robot is interacting with. There are a huge variety of different LiDAR models on the market that use all sorts of different technologies and come at very different price points, but broadly speaking, we can put them into three main categories. And firstly, we've got one-dimensional LiDAR or point LiDAR. So for example, I've got this little $20 digital tape measure and I can point it at the cupboard, it'll shoot a beam of light and tell me that it is 1.061 meters away. Now we don't use those heaps in robotics, but they can come in handy. For example, if you've got a UAV, you might want to point it down toward the ground to measure your altitude, or on a mobile robot, you could point it forwards and measure how far away you are from a wall that's right in front of you. Next up, we've got 2D LiDAR, which is probably the most common type of LiDAR you'll see out there these days. For this, you can imagine taking your 1D LiDAR, strapping it to a motor, and spinning it around in circles. And as long as you know exactly which direction the laser was facing when it fired, you can generate an entire 2D scan plane of points. So these are sometimes called laser scanners. This is really useful for building like a floor plan of a room that you can then use to navigate and avoid obstacles. Then finally, we've got 3D LiDAR. So unlike the 2D LiDAR, which radiates out in a single plane, the 3D LiDAR is radiating out in three dimensions and it's generating a point cloud of points. It's almost like taking a three-dimensional photo. Now, the different models that are out there use different methods and technologies. Uh, historically, they've been very expensive, but they're starting to come down in price. And these are really useful for when you wanna generate a really rich 3D representation of the world around your robot. For the robot I'm currently building, and for what we'll see later in this video, I'm using this hobby grade 2D LiDAR. But if you do want to find out more about any of these industrial LiDARs, if you want videos on how to integrate them with ROS and that sort of thing, let me know in the comments and I'll be happy to make some videos on them down the track. Because LiDARs are such a common sensor to use in robotics, ROS has really good support for them. So when we're working with 2D LiDARs, ROS provides for us the laser scan message, which is inside sensor messages. And basically what this is, is it's a big array of numbers that represent each of the range measurements in meters for a single sweep of the LiDAR. It also contains a bunch of other parameters that it needs to reconstruct the scan properly and the transform frame that the LiDAR is attached to. And that lets us figure out where those points live in three dimensional space, which is really handy, especially when we wanna combine multiple LiDARs together at once. When you're using other kinds of software, it can be really difficult to work with different LiDAR models from different manufacturers because they all speak different language and store their data in different formats. But when you're using ROS, all you need is the right driver node for each different model, and that driver will publish a laser scan message. And so then whatever algorithms or anything you wanna run, as long as you write them to work with a laser scan message, they'll be able to work with any different kind of LiDAR that you wanna throw at it. When we're using 3D LiDARs, or sometimes if we've got 2D LiDARs, but we're moving them up and down to kind of create our own 3D LiDAR, then rather than using the laser scan message, ROS gives us the point cloud 2 message. And this is just a random array of, of points in space. So no matter what kind of crazy different designs of LiDAR that you get out there, as long as their driver is able to publish a point cloud message, then again, you'll be able to write software and visualizations that can read that and parse it. And so you can use any kind of 3D LiDAR that you want. Like I said before, in this video, we're gonna be focusing on 2D LiDARs and laser scans. But in a couple of videos time, we'll be looking at depth cameras, which are very similar to 3D LiDARs and will also utilize that point cloud message. To start practically learning how we use LiDARs in ROS, we're gonna be integrating a LiDAR into a simulated robot. Now, this is following on from a couple of tutorials ago where I showed how to make a mobile robot in Gazebo. So you can go watch that if you haven't already. Um, otherwise, you should still be able to follow along. So I'm gonna open up my workspace that I already have from those other videos. You can see here's the files we had last time. 
And the first thing I'm gonna do is go to my main robot Xacro file. And just like before, how we added an include for the gazebo control, we're gonna add another include. So this time, we're gonna create a file called lidar.exacro. And so all of the stuff that's to do with adding a lidar to our robot, we're gonna put uh, in this new file. So now we need to create a new file called lidar.exacro. And as always, we'll just take our XML and robot tags and tell it that it's an XML file. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna to need to add is a joint and a link for our LiDAR so that uh, Robot State Publisher knows where it is within our robot. So we'll start by adding a joint and we'll call it uh, LiDAR joint. Actually, I'm gonna call it laser joint. Um, you can call it whatever you want. And end with the joint tag. Now for this joint, oh, and it's gonna be type fixed. Unless your LiDAR is on an extra motor or something like that. So we've got the parent link is gonna be our chassis. So if you remember from our robot core, we had our, our chassis link here. So it's gonna be parented to that. Then the child link name. Now we're gonna create this in a minute. I'm actually gonna call mine laser frame rather than laser link. Um, it just fits with some of the other standards that get used. Again, you can call it whatever you want. Then we've got the origin. So origin x, y, z equals, we'll go zero, zero, zero for now. I'll pitch your equals zero, zero, zero. Now, where should it actually be? Well, if you remember the origin of our chassis is at the back. So we wanna go up a little bit and forward a little bit. So I'm gonna go forward by, let's go 0 0.1 in X, and then we'll go up by 0 0.175 in Z. So that should put the origin of our, of our laser link. So now we need to create the actual link. Uh, so it's gonna need a name, and we'll call it laser frame, like I said. Now I'm gonna represent my laser by a cylinder, and so because I'm lazy, I'm gonna to go to our robot core exacro here and find the geometry of one of our wheels. And I'm just gonna take that and copy and paste it. So we're gonna make this one uh, a wheel, except let's make it, uh, let's make it red this time. Um, so this should give us a, a red cylinder for our laser. Now I've just remembered I didn't actually have a red color in specified here in my robot core file. So I'm just gonna create an extra color for red. All right, so this should create a, a new transform frame and we should have a red cylinder. Let's see if that worked. So I'm gonna open up my workspace and Colcon build. All right, so we've built that. I'm gonna source my workspace in a new tab and then I'm gonna run the uh, robot state publisher launch file that I had in the past. So now we should be able to run Arviz. Uh, we'll set our fixed frame to base link. We'll add a robot model like normal. And there we go. You can see we've got our little uh, cylinder there that represents our laser. Uh, our wheels aren't working at the moment because we haven't got the joint states published. But there we go, there's our laser. So now it's time to get it working in Gazebo. So we're gonna be adding simulated LiDAR data. Now you might remember from before that we're gonna to have to have a gazebo tag that goes along with this link and then we're gonna have some other things in that tag. Now this gets a little bit complicated so I've actually got one that I prepared earlier that I'm gonna copy and paste from and then we're gonna step through it. So I'll just grab that and paste it here. Now, all right, so I'm adding a gazebo tag uh, and the reference is laser frames. This is adding a gazebo tag that's associated with that laser frame link. Within that, we start off with a sensor tag. Now the name doesn't really matter, but it says it's type ray. So this is still within gazebo, we're adding a simulated sensor that is a ray sensor. So that just means a, a scanning LiDAR. 
Okay, inside that, what have we got? We've got pose, which is zero, zero, zero. We're just saying that the origin of the virtual sensor is at the origin of that link. Visualize is true. So we do want to visualize this in Gazebo. Um, eventually we'll probably turn that off, but it's good when we're starting out. Uh, and update rate is 10. So 10 times a second, we want to update the sensor. Then we've got these other two tags, the ray tag and the plugin tag. So the ray tag is going to specify the parameters for the virtual ray sensor. So let's open that up. Uh, we've got scan here, which has horizontal. So this tells us that it's scanning horizontally with 360 samples, a resolution of one, and angling from minus 180 degrees to plus 180 degrees in radians. Then we look at the range settings, and I've got the range set to a minimum of 300 mil and a maximum of 12 meters with a resolution of 0.01. Okay, that's pretty good. So that's setting up the parameters of the ray sensor. Now we've got a plugin. And so plugins, if you remember, are how we get Gazebo to interact with things outside Gazebo. So name, again, doesn't really matter, but the file name here is libgazebo ROS ray sensor. So this is the plugin that takes a Gazebo ray sensor and gets it to talk to ROS. So we'll open that up. Uh, we've got the frame name set here as laser frame. So that's uh, telling it what frame ID to put in the laser scan message. We've got the output type as laser scan, so telling it that's the type of message we want to publish. Then we've got this little ROS tag, and it's just telling it what topic to publish it onto. So it's saying, okay, we're publishing a laser scan message to the topic scan uh, with the frame ID as laser frame. So we can save that. All right, so we'll go back to that other tab we had open before for Robot State Publisher, make sure we kill that. And now I'm gonna launch my Gazebo simulator again. So if you remember, I had a, a launch file for that. So it was called launch sim, and I had a, a little virtual world for it to go into. So we'll run that. And now you can see it's, it's launched it, but this time it's got the virtual LiDAR on top of the robot and it's scanning all of the things. Oh, you can see we forgot to set the color on this. So, so if we just go back to here on our gazebo uh, link reference, we also want to add material is uh, gazebo slash red. So let's just close that down and rerun it. Great. So now we've got our little red LiDAR there. And just like before, we can uh, run a Teleop Twist keyboard. You can check out the other tutorial again for, for more on how that works. And so we can drive it around and you can see it's updating that virtual LiDAR. And so now what we can do, if we uh, open up RViz again, so where was this? this is the tab I had RViz in. So we'll launch RViz again. Now, remember from before, uh, in the other tutorial, we can set that to ODOM, add our robot model. And so we can see where the robot is in real space. But what we can do now, if we go add laser scan, and we set the topic to slash scan, and I'm just gonna bump up the size of the points here to 0 0.04. And what we should see is all of the virtual laser points that are coming from Gazebo. So if I bring these over to the side, uh, let me try and get these to a similar kind of point of view. And if I then use the teleop to drive it around, you can see that the virtual laser points are coming up in Arviz. In fact, I could probably almost make Arviz full screen drive around, and without even seeing Gazebo, I can navigate around these cones. So it's great that that works for our simulated robot, but what about getting a LiDAR to work on a real robot? What we'll do now is I'll be plugging this little LiDAR into my Raspberry Pi and getting it to talk to Ross, and hopefully we'll be able to see points coming out of this from a real LiDAR in Arviz. So to start off with, we'll just close down uh, Gazebo. Let's close Arviz. We'll just close everything that we've got so far. We won't be needing that. So here I've got the RP LiDAR A1, which is a pretty popular and cheap hobby grade LiDAR. Now, admittedly, they are a little bit more expensive and a little bit harder to come by at the moment, like a lot of other things, but they are out there. 
And so we'll start by plugging it into the Raspberry Pi using a micro USB cable. Now it is pretty fussy about which micro USB cables it likes. So if you are having trouble, try a different cable. So we'll see that starts to spin up. And now what we want to do is we'll open an SSH terminal uh, connected to our Pi. So I'm just going to change my terminal profile here. The first thing we're going to need is the ROS driver for this LiDAR. Now unfortunately there's a few different versions that are floating around out there. I think because the manufacturer took a little while to update their driver from ROS1 to ROS2 and in the meantime uh, a bunch of different people made their own ones and they all work. I was using one from GitHub for a while but today I'm going to use the one from the apt repos. So we'll just sudo apt install ROS foxy rp lidar ROS. And apparently I've already installed it. I must have forgotten. So now to talk to this LiDAR, we're going to run the driver. So we'll type ROS2 run RP LiDAR ROS. And then we've got the, the node is called RP LiDAR Composition. It's a bit of a weird name. Uh, don't worry too much about it. And this will run the driver node. Now this might work out of the box, but generally we're going to want to set some parameters. So the first parameter we've got is the serial port. So serial port. And for me, it's slash dev slash TTY USB zero. We're going to talk a bit more about the serial port later. Uh, if you've got other serial devices connected, like an Arduino, then don't run this just yet. Um, then we've got uh, the frame ID. And so that is uh, what's the transform frame that our LiDAR is attached to. And you'll remember from before that we called ours laser frame. So we'll go laser frame. Then next up, we've got a parameter called angle compensate. Uh, you just want this to be true. The weird thing is it always says that it's on, but it isn't always. So we're going to explicitly set that to, to true. And then finally, you can set the scan mode. Uh, you don't have to do this. Um, you can check the manual for the LiDAR for what the different modes are. I'll set mine to standard, but um, yeah, you can check out the different ones. So let's run that. And you can see RP LiDAR running. It's going to start talking to the LiDAR. And so what this is going to be doing now is it's publishing laser scan messages from this LiDAR to the scan topic. So I'm going to go back to my other terminal here and we can run RViz. And just like before, I'm going to add a laser scan. So we'll choose the scan topic. Now you can see here it says status OK, but we're still not seeing anything. It's because we've got to select the right frame. Because we haven't got Robot State Publisher running at the moment, it, it doesn't know what frames are out there. So I'm just going to have to type laser frame myself. And we'll make these a bit bigger again. And as you can see, there's the LiDAR points. So if I just rotate this, hopefully you can see me, you can see the room. If I open up that door, you should be able to see that in the picture. So there you go. We can run the driver, we can publish laser scan messages from our LiDAR uh, ready for RViz or a SLAM algorithm or any other ROS node to listen to and act on. Before we finish up though, I'm just going to give you four more tips for when we're working with this. So firstly is the serial port. Now like we saw before, I was uh, setting the serial port to slash dev slash TTY USB zero. But if you've got other serial devices, maybe an Arduino like I've got for my motor controller, they're not always guaranteed to come up the same. And so what we can do if we type ls slash dev slash serial, you can see we've got by ID or by path. So if we look at by ID, you can see here I've got the option of USB, Silicon Labs, blah, 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 blah. That means our LiDAR. So if we had an Arduino plugged in, it would have a different name uh, and we can use that to specifically select it. The other option is we can do by path. And again, there's this weird long name. Uh, it's not that nice to read, but if, if we plug in the LiDAR to the same port every time, then it will always come up as this. And so you can have the Arduino plugged into one port, the LiDAR plugged into another port. You could even have two LiDARs plugged in. And as long as you specify that path by path, then you should be able to do it. Sorry, I just had to clear that. I messed it up a bit. So let's get that path again, slash dev, slash serial, slash by path. There it is. So we'll get our driver. And now instead of slash dev, slash TTY USB zero, we can take slash dev, slash serial by path. 
And now we want that serial object. And as you can see, it still works. The next thing we might want to do is to stop the motor. We might not want it running all the time. We might want to save battery. So coming back here to our uh, development PC, it could be on the Raspberry Pi, it could be on a different PC on the network. The driver node gives us a service for starting and stopping a LiDAR. So we can type ROS2 service call, and now we should get a list here. We've got start motor and stop motor. So if we type stop motor, now the type we can see is a empty message and then we'll just give it empty braces and you can see the motor stopped and then again we can run it with start motor and start the motor back up again. So a third tip is using launch files just like we do with everything else. Uh, we can create a launch file um, that contains those parameters for us so it makes it a bit easier. Um, you can also use a params file to do it. Um, but I like using launch files. So here I've just got it um, in the root of my robot workspace. I will put it inside the Articubot1 uh, repo that I've got, but for now it's just in there. So you can see it's just pretty simple. It launches it with those four parameters that we had before. So if I go back to here, I can type ROS2 launch rplidar.launch.py and it's working just the same as it was before. The last thing is sometimes this node can get locked up easy. Like right now, if I hit control C, it'll probably stop it, but sometimes it gets locked up. And if it does, then you'll be able to uh, kill it by logging in on another terminal and typing kill all RP LiDAR composition. And now you can see that process has died. So if it locks up, you just want to run that. Having a LiDAR attached to our robot means we're going to be able to use SLAM algorithms to generate a map of the environment around our robot and navigate it autonomously. Before we get to doing that though, we're going to add a couple more sensors to our robot. So in the next few videos, we'll be looking at how to use cameras and depth cameras with Ross. So make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss out on that. And like I said before, if you are interested in anything more about these LiDARs, especially uh, how to get them going with Ross, then let us know in the comments and maybe I'll make some videos on them down the track. Otherwise, I'll see you next time.